Hi and welcome to this video and a new episode of Behind the Photo and in this episode we talk about this picture. Alright, as you can see it's a picture of the Northern Lights and it was photographed in Scotland and I never photographed or even saw the Northern Lights before in Scotland. For those people who don't know what behind the picture is, I just um, yeah, give a quick summary of how I took the photo of how everything came together in which circumstances because usually the story behind the photo is just as interesting as the photo itself because usually there's a lot of luck um, into a photo and um, yeah everything has to fit perfect that you can capture the photo so I hope you get inspired and you might learn maybe something as well. So the photo was um, taken in Scotland in this year, so in 2016. It was March, I think it was the end of March. I had two workshop groups there um, at the Isle of Skye and it was the second group so it has to be in the end of March as I remember. I can't remember the exact date. But we had some activity of Northern Lights already with the first group and then as the second group arrived, I think it was the second day when they arrived, we wanted to eat something. And whoever of you were at the Isle of Skye already knows that it's not that easy to get something to eat in the evening when it's not the main season. So I have some favorite pubs. One of my favorite pub pubs is, uh, is the uh, Old Inn. Um, it's next to the Taliska uh, distillery and uh, one of my other favorite pubs is the uh, Stein Inn. I heard from Scottish people it's called Steen Inn. I don't know why it's called Steen Inn. I think it should be called Stein Inn, but never mind. So it's in the northwest of the island. And we were there at 8 15 pm and it was closed already. So there was no more uh, warm kitchen, the chef was gone and uh, there was nothing to eat for us and for the group. We were photographing the whole day, we were very hungry and our plan was, okay, we photographed all day, we're going to eat something nice, some burgers, they're a great venison burger and a good steak and stuff. So we're gonna eat, we maybe drink a beer, then after that we take or we try to take photos of the Northern Lights because you never know if they appear or if they are strong if the activity is good or something. So we had nothing to eat and we just said okay we have nothing to eat but we have some uh, let's call uh, yeah, smaller stuff like snacks and we usually buy at the supermarket and on the Isle of Skye there are just like three supermarkets or so. So it's not that easy to get something to eat after 8 uh, p.m. as well. Um, and only, only the big supermarkets uh, in the south uh, or in, in, in Portree are open. So we had something to eat but we didn't want it to drive any longer so we drove directly to our spot. It was a graveyard. It's somewhere in the northwest. I think it's called Trumpen but I'm not pretty sure about the name. I can't remember names um, that good. But we uh, stopped there at the parking place. We started to eat. I usually eat hummus uh, and uh, chicken, <laughs> so I'm on low carb, uh, just everything uh, uh, with a lot of protein. And we were eating there and my already pretty good eyes for Northern Lights just looked in the sky and I saw some shining on the horizon. And I, I was eating and then usually I take my uh, Sony 7S and then I just film in the sky and then if there's something green in the sky I know okay it's definitely Northern Lights and not just some clouds. So I did that and I was eating, the whole group was eating the snacks and uh, prepared for the Northern Lights but nobody saw them. <laughs> so we're just standing outside the car and then I said ah oh, uh, did you know that there are just northern lights behind you? <laughs> and then everybody was turning around, whoa, there are the northern lights, where? <laughs> exactly, because it's not that easy to see them with your bare eyes um, you know, when you have never seen them before. They look pretty much like clouds, only if the activity is very strong, you can see a greenish color or you can see them even moving. So everybody was turning around and with the tripods next to each other, just next to the car, no composition, no nothing, just in the sky taking pictures, taking pictures. And then I said, okay, cool, 
But let's move on. Let's take some really pictures and not just uh, sky pictures with some uh, greenish color in it. The activity was pretty strong and it was like maybe now 8 45 or something. We went over to the graveyard just next to the uh, parking lot and we were in pretty good conditions which are not that usually I would say but I couldn't take the picture as it is if it weren't that condition. So we had half moon so the moon was pretty strong. Half moon is already pretty strong so it was uh, bright enough to see without a torch or something on the graveyard and I had the perfect condition to get a bright foreground. So just the moonlight with a longer exposure would make a very bright picture already, a, a bright foreground. So I, for my composition, um, took a look for some old gravestone with a cross on it. And the fun part about it is you think, okay, it's Scotland, there are everywhere um, some, some stones with a cross, but it was the only one on the whole graveyard with a cross. So I found it um, in the darkness, just with the moonlight, and I made my composition right the graveyard, uh, the, the gravestone, in the background a bit of a graveyard and an old church. And um, we did already some filming, so I knew that spot from an, uh, an episode I made in German um, about Scotland, about, uh, it's called Jaworski around the world. There may be, or there, there is already an episode which we translated in English on that channel, but I don't know at what time it will uh, come on that channel, uh, but it will be awesome. So it's one of my favorite series we ever filmed. We did it in Scotland, uh, South Africa, Norway and Australia. So you can really look forward for it and I'm looking forward to uh, how, how you people uh, uh, will find it. It's very, I think it's very inspiring for photographers. So, where, where, where was I talking about? Um, we had the northern lights in the background. So we had the greenish color, we had the old graveyard, I had the, gray, uh, uh, the nice uh, gravestone on the right side. But if there was new moon, so like no moon, no more light, it would be just a dark picture. You would have a silhouette of the gravestone and the northern lights in the background. But because we had half moon, and the moon was perfectly standing, so it was just perfectly the right time. So the moon was shining from the side and it was just a nice shape of the whole gravestone. So you had dark and bright spots. Um, it was just like it was perfectly lit by a flash or something, but it was just the moonlight. And I learned in Norway that even with full moon you, you can take great pictures of the northern lights. So perfect conditions, uh, perfect moon, the northern lights were pretty strong, I, I could take like I don't know, maybe I took 20 pictures or something, moved around, so no picture was the same. Um, when I did one picture uh, like it is, I take usually a portrait mode, I take landscape mode, I go uh, closer, I go further away, I take a different angle, so each shot um, is different. I did a time lapse as well um, of uh, this whole uh, scenario and it was pretty awesome. Let's talk about the settings I had for this shot. In German it's always Sag mal Einstellung, Digger. And uh, my settings are uh, something, um, something common for a shot like that, but something uncommon as well. You, you might be surprised which settings I had. So first of all, I had ISO 6400, which is usual for some dark shots, Northern Light, Milky Way. I usually have a high ISO, ISO uh, 6400 for full frame cameras, not that high. It's pretty okay and you're, you don't have a lot of noise. So to get more light on the sensor, I put the ISO up. Second of all, exposure time, I had 10 seconds of exposure. That's what I usually take as well uh, on Milky Way shots or Northern Light shots. Um, they look sharper, you get very sharp uh, stars uh, as well, so you don't have lines of the stars, just um, dots from the stars. And the unusual part is I had f4.5 even if I could take 2.8 because that was the widest aperture I could take, but I took 4.5. Why did I take 4.5? Because the gravestone was so close to my lens. I was in wide angle, 60 millimeters on full frame, and it was pretty close. So if I were on 2.8, the stone might be a bit blurry, so I just closed the aperture because the moon was shining and I had a lit uh, foreground already, so I had enough light. When I put the ISO up, I can close the aperture and I closed it 
to 4.5 to get more sharpness. I focused uh, till infinity. I might could focus a bit more in the foreground, but with stars it's always difficult to go on hyperfocal distance. So I go uh, more in the background on infinity and then just play with my aperture. So that's it for that shot. So what we can take in mind or what we can remember after this episode is that you need a lot of luck. If the kitchen was open or if the chef would be available and served us dinner after uh, 8 p.m., we wouldn't be there. We wouldn't be at that spot at that time. We wouldn't have that moon because two hours later the moon would be in another di uh, direction and the northern lights might be not that strong anymore. So we had a lot of luck and we had an empty stomach, almost empty, just snacks, but we had some great shots and that's what, uh, what photography is all about, I think. So a lot of luck and a lot of passion um, beneath the uh, shot. The whole group was very lucky. So if you have like the first or the second evening and you can get Northern Lights in Scotland, it is amazing. I never had Northern Lights in Scotland before. And even the owner of our property uh, where we rested was saying that she just saw two times Northern Lights in the whole life. And she's something like 70 or something old. So it is, uh, yeah. It was a lot of luck behind that shot. I think it's a, it's a great shot. It, it is not, um, or you need a lot of luck to do that shot at that place again, ever. Boom! <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed um, this episode of Behind the Photo, the story behind the shot. And if you like this episode, just uh, hit the thumbs up. And if you want uh, to see more, just write a comment. And what I want from you is just take a look at my Instagram or at my website or at my Facebook page, facebook.com slash bjphoto with the F or Instagram is just Jaworski. And there are a lot of pictures. Each day I post one picture at least. And if you want to see some special behind the photo episode. So just for the photo you want to see, then write a comment, write me an email, write me a Facebook message, write me a Snapchat, write me whatever, but uh, with the picture and then I can ta uh, talk in some of the next episodes about just the picture you want to hear the story about. I think almost behind every photo there's some interesting story. So looking forward for the next time I see you again on this channel and never forget, sag mal einstellung Digger und haut rein. Oh, there's one thing I forgot. If you are interested in learning Lightroom, I can recommend my website learnfromben.com. There's a whole video course where I teach you how I use Lightroom and how you can use Lightroom the easy and effective way. So back from lunch, back from the break, back into Lightroom. And we talked about all those sliders. Now we're talking about those tools you have here on top. If you ever used um, a Camera Raw in Photoshop, you might know some of those tools, but they are here on the left hand side on top uh, here in Lightroom. Everything's on the right side, which has something to do with the development.